All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see, we have a 1988 Ford Bronco. This thing is absolutely covered in mold, algae, dust, you name it. And this video is gonna be a little different from my other ones because this one's gonna mainly be an outside transformation. But the inside did have some leaks around all the seals. So there is some mold on the inside and the carpets are pretty damp. Vehicle, we will be doing a full exterior and interior detail. So you guys will wanna make sure you stay around to the very end because this transformation is gonna be completely mind blowing. If you guys enjoy watching these videos, make sure you like and subscribe because we have a ton of more content like this coming soon. But without further ado, let's jump right into this disaster detail. Jumping straight into the wash process, we're going to go ahead and get these moldy wheels all cleaned up. So to start off, we're going to go ahead and blast away all the mold and dirt that has been sitting, building up onto these wheels. Um, then we're going to come back through with some extreme APC, spray the fender wheel, spray the tire, and then spray the rim with uh, some iron eraser. And go ahead and let that sit and do its thing while we go ahead and clean up the rest of the wheel. Uh, for the tires, we will be using a stiffer tire brush. Go ahead and scrub it, get all the blooming, get all the leftover mold, all the sand off. And then we're going to rinse the whole wheel again, spray it with some more iron eraser, and actually work it into all the crevices that are in the wheel. So the wheel holes, uh, the rivets around the wheel, uh, around the valve stem, everything like that. And then pressure wash it away.
We use the stiffer tire brush on the face of the rim as well. Uh, we're not really worried about scratches because the wheel has to get sanded down and painted anyway. The customer, when he brought it to us, said he'd rather have the wheels painted black rather than polished out. For the exhaust tip, we went ahead and sprayed it off with a pressure washer, removing any mold, dirt, contaminants that were easily, uh, you know, removed with the pressure washer. Then we're going to come back through with some iron eraser, spray it on there, let it eat away at all that it can, uh, give it a nice scrub, spray that off, and then we're going to come back through with some acid to go ahead and eat the rust and then clean up the chrome just a little bit more before spraying it off with the pressure washer. So now that that excessive pile of sticks and leaves and the little plant's gone, we can actually open the hood and get started on the engine bay. So we're gonna spray it all down with some extreme APC before coming back through with the pressure washer and spraying it all clean. So now starting the pre-rinse on this vehicle, we're spraying it down with some extreme APC and then coming back through with the pressure washer to strip all the mold off of this vehicle before we actually start washing it with a wash mitt and soap. So as you can see, it's extremely satisfying watching the mold get stripped off this window. Uh, as far as the street glow sticker, the customer did not want those on there anymore. So he went ahead and blasted them off with the pressure washer. So by this point, I'm sure you guys are just as shocked as we were as to how clean this paint is underneath all this mold. Uh, we were not expecting this. We thought it was going to be all kinds of oxidized, um, you know, just tore up from all the mold being on there. But it was actually in pretty decent shape aside from there being heavy swirl marks in the paint.
So now that the door jams have been sprayed out and the truck is now mold free, we can go ahead and layer it in a thick coat of foam before coming back through with a detail brush and hitting all the emblems, the grill, any small cracks that you can't get a wash mitt into, you want to hit with a detail brush before coming back through with the wash mitt and giving it a nice bath that it really needed over the years.
So the truck is inside on jack stands and we have the wheels pulled off of it. So we can go ahead and prep them for paint. Uh, we sprayed the outside of the tire with some APC then came back through for the barrel of the rim with some acid. Uh, use the detail brush, give it a nice scrub, get all the brake dust, the rust, anything like that off of the wheel. So it makes it easier when we go to sand it and paint it. Also, we're not going to show the painting process just because it, it was so labor intensive and took us so long just to get it right um, that it'd make this video way beyond an hour long. With the topper removed, it provides better lighting so we can get these uh, before shots to you and you can see what the inside of this thing looked like without seats in it. Um, it's not a disaster detail that we're used to. It's more along the lines of it's been sitting, it has a bunch of ants, there's some trash, and the carpet is in really, really bad shape. So we're going to go ahead and clean the carpet, extract it, and then paint it black because the customer wanted us to do so. As normal, we're gonna go ahead and go around and pull out all the big trash that cannot get sucked up by the vacuum before coming back through with the vacuum and getting everything that we could not pick up by hand.
Now that the carpet's out, it's time to go ahead and extract these seats. So as always, we spray it down with some extreme APC, come back through with the green drill brush, break up all the fibers, the stains, all the gunk that's been in these seats for years before coming back through with the extractor. And as always, extracting all the way until the water turns clear.
with the seats, uh, we will be lightly dyeing them back to red. Uh, as you can see, they are quite faded and quite used. So make sure you do stick around until the very end and you can see what they look like dyed. So moving on to the carpet, uh, we're using the same process we used on the seats. Spray it down with some APC, come back through with the green drill brush, break up the fibers, and lastly extract all the way until the water is clear. Uh, with these carpets, unfortunately they were used and abused for so long that they actually started fading. You can see it's like a yellowish, brownish color. Um, it was still like that even though the water and the extractor was coming up clear. So with some the stuff like that, you can't really fix it. There's nothing we can put on that carpet to make it come back red. It is The red is done for. But no worries because the customer actually requested for us to dye the carpet black. So that's what we will be doing. And you'll never see that the carpet was faded like that.
So the foam that's being used here is actually a stain penetrator. Uh, we thought this would take out the yellowness to the carpet, but it didn't. That's how we concluded that the carpet is actually either sun faded or the dye was missing. Uh, we, we, don't, we really don't know. All we know is it didn't change anything. Um, it still stayed yellow, but that's not a big deal because, like I said before, we are dyeing this carpet black. So the carpet actually had been set out to dry for quite some time before we actually started dyeing it. Um, as you can see here, we started out with a light coat, let it sit for a minute, and then came back and applied some heavier coats. Uh, we didn't really get the process of brushing it in, uh, just because that's a lengthy process too. You got to brush it, paint it, brush it, paint it, brush it, paint it. Um, so for the sake of the video, we just showed the painting parts. We didn't show the actual brushing it into the fiber part.
So for the interior, we're using some extreme APC uh, with a soft detail brush and a microfiber towel to dry it. Uh, as you can see, I sprayed it onto the panel, uh, broke everything loose with the detail brush before coming back through and drying it with the microfiber. And this was really tricky. Uh, we don't do very many like older cars, so the paint around the, the bezel of the gauges was actually peeling up and we really didn't want to mess with it because it was already starting to crack. So taking it out was a bigger risk than actually just cleaning around it. Um, so I lightly cleaned it to avoid uh, breaking it and chipping off more paint than what was necessary. I know y'all are probably wondering where the steamer is in this video. Um, unfortunately, we were scared to use it. We didn't want to take the risk of removing dye, removing paint that's on these door panels. Um, so we contacted the customer and said, hey, uh, we clean these door panels as good as we can. There's still a little bit of mold staining on the armrest. Uh, he said that was fine. He doesn't want to take the risk in us actually ruining the door panel. So we cut our losses at a little bit of staining and we just left it there and got it as clean as we could get it without actually destroying the door panel, the paint, and the leather. So with this panel, the customer wanted it re-dyed black because it was all peeling and flaking off. So we're gonna go ahead and strip it off with the pressure washer, get as much of it off as we can before coming back through and dyeing it with our dye, which is a little bit better. It doesn't flake, it doesn't chip. It's, it's actually a lot, a lot better than this dye. Um, not bragging or anything, but it just truthfully is. So that's what we're doing is stripping it here so we can take it out back and actually get it dyed the right way.
now that the panel is completely stripped of the previous black dye and fully dried off of any water, we took it out back and we are now dyeing it um, just using black dye, doing light coats, but going over it quite a few times. That way it, we don't have any runs. We don't have any thick spots. It's all even and it looks really good once it dries. So now it is the rack for the spare tires turn to get sanded and painted down. So I'm pulling it off here. It's just two pins, beat them out, and then you can break, take the whole uh, bracket off. So I'm sanding it down with some 800 grit, kind of give it all nice and even. And then I also have a wire brush on the drill that I'm using for any tight corners that have built up rust, uh, flaking paint, anything like that. Get it all sanded down and level. So that way when we go to paint it, it looks really, really good. This clip, we are clay barring the paint. Uh, essentially, what the clay does is remove the pores of the clear coat from any contaminants, sand, dirt that you can't typically get out when you're washing the car with just a wash mitt. Um, so clay is really useful for that. But when you use it, you want to make sure that you're actually going to be buffing your, your vehicle afterwards. Um, if not, it actually removes all the waxes and everything that helps protect your paint. So after you get done clay barring, there is no more wax. There is no more protectant that is on your paint. So you make sure that you buff it out and then you come back through and seal the paint. Now that we have rid the paint of any contaminants, it is time to start buffing on it. So what we're using here is a microfiber cutting pad along with our prototype ceramic compound. Um, it is not quite out yet. We're still working on it, but we will let you know as soon as it is ready to be purchased. Uh, for now, you get to see how we use it and the results that we get with it.
So now we are polishing the paint. We're using a soft polish pad and some polish. Uh, what this does is it actually takes out all the marring, all the imperfections, all the buffer trails that are left behind from the cutting process. And what it does is it leaves a sealable finish. And what that means is you can either A, throw a layer of wax onto it, or B, you can ceramic coat it. Um, that is what we did in this. Uh, we ceramic coated this truck, but we did not show it in the video simply because we wanted to keep the video under an hour. And as you can see, we are almost right there at that mark. So now that the truck's been buffed out and ceramic coated, here are some before and after shots. And if y'all enjoy these videos, go ahead and leave a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are not yet subscribed. And hit that little bell to turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any, and I mean any, of our future videos. Because you will want to see them. They will be disastrous, they will be moldy, and they will be satisfying. So make sure you tune in for the next video, and as always, we will catch you next time.